What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, I want to keep it as short as I possibly can, but I want to show you guys where are the best options if you're trying to invest $100, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000 or even more than that. Let's go ahead and get into this video and we're going to talk about the chains, coins and what you guys should be looking at. Let's go ahead and start with the first example of $100. When you're farming or using $100 in crypto, you need to look for the lower gas fee chains. You want to look for ones like Matic, Harmony, Aurora, Celo, Osmosis, Solano, and a couple of other Cosmos chains. Now, what do all these chains have in common? Well, one is either the transactions are a penny or sub penny, or they are free. Now, the reason why I mentioned that on the gas fees is because if you're taking $100 and paying a dollar a transaction or even 50 cents a transaction, you do a lot of transactions when you're playing in cryptocurrency. Now using $100 isn't gonna limit you from using like Phantom or using other chains like Avalanche, but just keep in mind when you're using those, you want to go in different farms and protocols where you're just basically going to sit it and forget it, or at least not touch it again for at least another month. Because if you're constantly doing these transactions, you're gonna eat into the profits. If you aren't making any profits, there's no point in being in DeFi. Now. Let's say, you, for example, you want to play with $1,000. This will open up your limits a little bit more. So now you can play around with some more stuff. So this is still going to be on the lower gas fee chains, but now you can start using Phantom, Luna, Binance Smart Chain a little bit more freely. Now, the reason why I say Binance Smart Chain and Luna a little bit more freely, not unlimited, because your gas fees are still a cost. There are some transactions on Luna that are as cheap as three cents, and then there are some as expensive as about $2.67 or $2.50. Same thing with Binance Smart Chain. They have some as cheap as maybe 40 cents, um, but as some as high as maybe two, three dollars. So if you're only playing with a thousand dollars, and say for example, you make 10 transactions on Binance Smart Chain that are three dollars a pop. That's $30 right there. And if you're making a, let's say, 30% APR on $1,000 per year, that's gonna make you only 300 bucks. Now, you minus the $30, and then that go ahead and, well, put you back at $270 in profit for the year. That is just minus the 10 transactions. I bet your buns you're gonna do more transactions than that. You may see some of these YouTubers who are on like transaction uh, 444,001. And then you're like, what the snap? 444,001. That's crazy. Well, just say, for example, those transactions were a penny a pop. So that means that YouTuber would have spent 4, 000, over $4,000 in transactions. If you're playing with $1,000, well, you're going to be down to hold that year. Now, of course, that's a lot of transactions. It's a bad example. But everything's relative. So if that's a penny a transaction, let's say they're a dollar a transaction. All you got to do is make 300 transactions and there goes your whole profit for the full year. Well, that happens. It's pretty crazy. Now, the next one I want to talk to you, that's, that's at 30% APRs, by the way, guys. So if you're only getting 10%, that only limits you to 100 transactions just to break even. Now, you don't want to break even in DeFi because you're taking on so much risk. It's like, bro, if you're breaking even, you're actually losing in DeFi because you have that money at risk. So, nah, bro. Now, let's talk about the next amount, which is 10,000. Now, 10,000, I think you'd be free to play on like Avalanche, Luna, Arbitrum, Binance Smart Chain, Metis, and very, very, very few Ethereum transactions. This would be something like you buy, stake, and then come back like two years later and unstake it type of thing. Uh, you don't want to mess with the Ethereum transactions. Those are like $50, $60 a pop and it's like nuts and ham. Uh, but going back to Avalanche, Luna, and Arbitrum, Avalanche is going, depending on the transaction and obviously depending on the Avalanche price and the complexity of the contract, those are probably going to be a dollar plus, maybe $2, $3, and those are going to set you back a bit. It's the same thing with Luna, 
you probably don't want to do a bunch of transactions but if you're playing around with 10,000 bucks, you can do a little more than the thousand dollar tier. The TLDR on setting these ratios is you want to figure out what your profits are and what your potential profits are because these are not set in stone and give a bit of wiggle room. So say for example, I am set to make 10% this year on 10,000 bucks. That means my profits would be thousand dollars. Me personally, I wouldn't want to see my spell sell spending more than a hundred dollars in gas fees or $150 in gas fees. If my profits are only going to be $1,000, I only want to spend 10% of those profits in gas fees max. I mean, you can spend more if you want, but you're really just cutting into your profits at that point in time. Keep in mind when you're playing around with DeFi, it is risky. And if you're not making profits with the risk, it's not worth it because you can lose all that money. Now again, I'll use the example. This is what I look for. If I'm using $10,000 and my print or APRs are 10%, that means my profit is 1,000. Because if it's 10%, that's a tenth. So 0.1 times 10,000, that's going to give me $1,000. And then of course I'd multiply that by 10%. That's going to be the $100. So you divide by 10, divide by 10, and that's where I get the $100. So $100 is my allowance for my gas fees. So I wanna go with chains where I can use the $100 and not be sapped super quick. If I'm on ETH and I have $100, well, I can do like two or three transactions and then I'm done. I'll call it the end of the year and I'll come back next year type of thing. That's how you wanna play with the ETH transactions. And then the last one we're going to talk about is $100,000 plus. You are free to go on any chain you want at this point, but try to limit your transactions. Remember, a good metric I like to use is, is 10% of your profits. So if my profits are going to be $1,000, I'm going to do 10% of that. So that means I will only pay gas fees in $100. But say my profits are $10,000. Well, then I'm fine spending $1,000 in gas fees. It's just the cost of doing business. Now, if I'm making $100,000, then I'm fine with $10,000 in gas fees. That's how you can factor it in. I like to use the metric of 10% of your profits. So if your profits, again, are $1,000, then it's $100. It's not 10% of how much you put in. It's of profits. And keep in mind, if you're not taking profits... Well, then there goes your gas fee allowance. You need to be taking profits so you can be paying for gas fees. Remember, it's all a numbers game. It's a math game. Now, if you're investing in different farms and trying to find different ones, now that you understand which chain you need to be on, what do you need to look for? Well, first, you need to find the narrative. If the narrative is Curve Wars or the narrative is Ohm Forks or Olympus Dow, then that's what you need to look for. Don't go investing in some like random coin that's like, oh yeah, this is this is the next big thing because it's sliced bread. No, because you got turkey tacos over here. Go get the turkey tacos. They taste so much better. Never had them, but the point is turkey tacos are in season, so you go with that and move along. Second, remember the name of the game. Not financial advice, but me personally, I look to accumulate as much Bitcoin and Ethereum as possible. That's the name of the game. That's what I figured out playing this crypto game. It's getting as much BTC and ETH as possible. Next, if you start small, you want to find the narrative that works and you can do it by farming. Just like I told you, you need to find the narrative. Just because you find the next big coin, you don't have to go flat out and buy it. You can farm a lot of these coins. Let me give you an example, the curve forks. If you don't wanna go buy curve, you can just farm curve with stable coins. Your risk at this point is your opportunity cost. Whereas if I took my thousand dollars and farmed on curve, or if I took my thousand dollars and I just bought something else, that is my opportunity cost. If curve goes to zero, well, I still have my thousand dollars. So the cost I lost was, well, the opportunity cost to bring that thousand dollars elsewhere. That is a safe play to go. That's why I like farming, not financial advice, of course. Next is don't try to hit a home run every time. 
If you're up a thousand bucks or up a hundred dollars, don't be like, oh yeah, I know it's going to get $200. Don't be greedy. Take a win, move on to the next. Take the small wins, move on to the next. Eventually, if you get 10 wins of $100 a pop, then that puts you at $1,000. And then if you get 10 wins at $1,000 a pop, that puts you at $10,000. So if you factor that in, it's compounding gains. Whereas if you were to go into a farm and you throw in $100, you lose it all. You start over with another $100, you lose it all. You're constantly at zero, 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 and you're starting over. Whereas Johnny is back over there doing push-ups in the background is just like wrecking everyone and is destroying it. And you're over here eating potato chips by just going all in onto a farm and just like, oh, I'm up 200 bucks. I'll wait till tomorrow. And then it goes to zero and you're like, man, I'll try this again. And then you try it again and do the same junk, different day. Definition of insanity. Trying to get a different result by doing the same thing over and over. It doesn't work. Now, next, don't be afraid to miss out on something. There's always another opportunity. Now next, don't go into more than a few farms or positions at once, especially when you're first starting out. If you literally have 100 different farms or 10 different farms, it's really hard to manage them. It's really hard to look at one and be like, okay, here's the metrics I need to pull out now. I spent $1,000 over here and I'm already at $400 in profit. Uh, should I pull out? It's, it's hard to do. Limit it to two or three, if not one. That is the best play to do in my opinion. That way you can focus your energy on it and figure out if it's working out or not. Then when you get more experienced, you can look into diversifying into other farms. Now these are for degen farms. If you're in something that is more stable and is something that is more proven, then you can be in a couple more farms like that. But degen farms, try to limit those because those can go to zero like that. <laughs> it is crazy. Now, next, do not be afraid to miss out on something. There's always going to be another opportunity. I heard this saying, it was a really, really smart saying, but you make more money on the deals that you don't do. I really think this applies to crypto because you actually make more money on the farms you don't get into. What do I mean by this? Say, for example, you see a farm on another chain and everyone's pumping it. They're talking about it. It's like the next big thing. And say you try to go move over there. You move on the bridge and whoa, to your surprise, the bridge is down. It's congested. So your funds are stuck there. Two days, you finally get over. The farm's over. You missed out. You would have made more money on not doing that deal and then farming with the stable coin on the chain you were already on. That's just an example. I'm just saying that from... Personal experience, I actually went into an opportunity like that and I realized, oh, well, the bridge is kind of doo-doo right now and I would have been better off just staying here. Just something to keep in mind. Lastly, pray to him. It's all in his hands. He'll take care of it. I want to leave you guys with this verse. Luke 22, verses 24. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. Yet, they have a house and God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than those birds? I'll leave a couple of my favorite farming rules below so you guys can review them and take a look into them. Uh, these were some of the farming rules I used to have on the channel all the time, especially when I was doing the degen farming. And I'll leave a link in the description below to the Patreon. This is going to be more exclusive content that's not on YouTube. And there's a lot more alpha in there that I don't show on YouTube. Just a quick TLDR on the farming rules. It's don't lose money. Don't invest what you're not willing to lose. Diversify your risk. Don't buy what you can earn. Don't pay those 4% deposit fees. If you don't know where the yield is coming from, you are the yield. Always take profits. 99.9999999999% of the farming token is going to go to zero. Do you want to be the bag holder? See you in the next one. You guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rentahomefast. Like literally, at rent a home fast.